a lot of glory. There's always a lot of glory. If you just set your affections and your emotions, your soul, your flesh, your spirit, man, you point everything at Jesus and just lock on. You focus everything of who you are on God. And it's like a magnifying glass. That God looks back at you with a, through a magnifying glass and just burns you up. <laughs> There's nothing left but just a glory cloud. <laughs> and then he steps into that glory cloud and proclaims who he is to the entire world. Hallelujah. You become a living epistle. You become holy. Holy. <laughs> you become holy. Hallelujah. I love the presence of God. I love the peace of God. I love God. Every attribute of Him. Even the fear of the Lord. I love the fear of the Lord. The fear of the Lord is pure. The fear of the Lord is clean. I love the fear of the Lord because it, it, it launches you into the next level. Hallelujah. I was going to read the Bible. I've been getting whacked all day. This amazing grace just landed on me. I watched a video and I didn't really feel too much sauce on it. So I switched to another video and started watching Benny Hinn, man. Wow. And just, I got absolutely plastered. I got <laughs> so plastered. I, I only watched like about probably about 20 minutes of it. It's five hours long. And so I just went and made a video and I got totally just plastered and drunk in the Holy Ghost and the drunken glory. And I came, I'm, right now, it's, my day has just started. I've come to pick up my daughter from school. <laughs> I'm pretty curious to see as to what's gonna happen here. <laughs> you know? She likes the presence of God too. We used to read Bible stories and in her room and the presence of God would flood the room. And I made it sometimes she'll just come sit on my lap and she'd feel the glory. She likes the glory too. She loves the presence of God. Unless you become like a child, you can't even enter the kingdom of heaven, right? The kingdom of God. It's just that total abandonment to God just total trust total faith total confidence that God is who he says he is and he'll do what he said he will do so I'm pretty excited about just being alive in Christ hallelujah take a deep breath of God When God breathed into Adam, Adam became a living soul. Hallelujah. The breath of God is like the ruach, the wind, the spirit life that fills the words that he speaks that are eternal, that will never pass away. The reason they'll never pass away is because they came from God and God will never pass away. And they're part of God because it's the word of God. It's his words and their spirit, their life. Life cannot be put to death. <laughs> the Spirit of God cannot die. He's immortal. He was always here. He'll always be here. And He gives us eyes to see. You know, through our first love gate. I've been stuck on the first love gate for like a couple weeks already. It's so important. It's like the foundation of everything that we are. You know, purpose of life is love. It's the person coming through your love, coming through your heart, coming through your life. Out of your heart will flow the issues of reality, the issues of life. His life, if it's full of Him. 
You know, when we uh, set our affections and our desires on God, it just it makes your life better. <laughs> it makes your heart better. Hallelujah. Let's let's check this out. This is Matthew chapter five. And when he saw the multitudes, he went up on the mountain. After he sat down, his disciples came to him. I like how that Jesus likes to be in a place of rest. That's the best place to teach out of his rest in the glory. You want to know how Jesus could keep crowds for th like three days just teaching them? It was the glory. It was the grace. It was the kabod, the shaka, the weighty glory. <laughs> the light of his presence it was the peace of God that passes all their understanding where they were just getting their minds renewed by the washing of the water of his living words and the torrents of living water coming through his mouth as he opened his mouth there was a double edged sword coming out he was only saying what his father said and he was cutting the hearts and it was killing demons <laughs> and it was filling the atmosphere on earth as it is in heaven you know, he wants it on earth as it is in heaven permanently. So he's going to pour out his spirit upon all flesh. And his, our, the sons and daughters are going to prophesy living words. It's going to be an open heaven. Your heart should be an open heaven. If you open it to the king of heaven, there will be an open heaven within your heart. It's the holy of holies. It's walking with God in the cool of the day. And even in the heat of the battle. You can always walk with God because that fruit is always there in every season of your life. If you've been spent time, if your roots have gone deep into the core of God, your the, the system, uh, your root system will pull the nutrients of God through you and it'll produce through, fruit outside of you. So you'll have an atmosphere to walk in of the fruit of the Spirit. You'll be walking in an atmosphere of love. You'll be walking in an atmosphere of peace. You'll be walking in an atmosphere of joy. You'll be walking in patience, meekness, humility, all the all the fruits of the spirit. But you have to you have to plug in to God's heart because that's where you get the nutrients from. It's from Him. It's from Jesus. <laughs> Jesus is the Word of God. Jesus is the heart of God. Jesus is the image of God made manifest to all of us so we can see what God is like. You know, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things came into being by Him, and apart from Him, nothing came into being that has come into being. So in Him, we move, we live, and we have our being. The Word of God. You can become a living epistle. He'll write His laws on your mind and put them in your heart by His Spirit. By the finger of God, you'll be marked. You know, we don't, you know how Moses had the tablets of stone in the Old Testament? Well, you're His living stones of the New Testament. He's got His hearts written, He's got His words written in His laws of the Spirit, written in your heart and in your mind. And so that you can keep the commandments of God very easily just by loving Him. It all goes back to the first love gate. And allowing His love to flood through you and to pave the way, <laughs> to see the way of Jesus Himself. Hallelujah. You could drive your car in the Holy Ghost. <laughs> oh, man. You can, you can walk your body in the spirit. <laughs> Hallelujah! You know your earth suit. The earth suit submits to you, and you are a spirit. He who is born of the spirit is spirit. So, oh man, I'm gonna get plastered. <laughs> I gotta go pick up my daughter. This is gonna be fun. Hallelujah. I'm just like a big kid in the in the glory. <laughs> I love Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Double portion of hallelujah. That's a double portion of praising God. 
I want to praise Him with my spirit. I want to praise Him with my body. And I want to praise Him with my soul. Let my soul magnify the Lord and my spirit rejoice in God my Savior. Hallelujah. And let's birth Jesus into the world. Hallelujah. Shabbat Oh yeah. In Him was life. This is Jesus, right? And the life was the light of men. The life of God shining through your face is the light of men. How do you know you're walking in the light? <laughs> How do you know you're walking in the life? Life more abundantly? It's Jesus Christ coming through your very being. Check yourselves whether you are in the faith. Do you not know that Jesus is in you? <laughs> And if Jesus is in you, he's going to ooze through you because the heaven of heavens cannot contain him. Who do you think you are? <laughs> you're going you're gonna to contain God? <laughs> God's like a river of life. God is the river of life and he wants to flow through your mouth. He wants to flow through your heart. He wants to flow through your eyes. He wants to flow through your ears. He wants to flow through your hands as you lay hands on the sick. He wants to flow through your atmosphere. You know, the first mention of God is the Creator, right? In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. He created. So the first mention of God is Creator. That nature is in you. You create atmospheres through your words. You create atmospheres through your belief systems. You can believe what man says or you can believe what the spirit of God says through a man or you can believe what God says in the spirit just straight up to your spirit without without any filter this you and God or you can believe the enemy you can believe the voices of unbelief and negativity and you know all those curses that they try to put you under well, that's going to bring an ugly atmosphere. You want the atmosphere of glory. The glory of God is the person of God. And the way that you stay in the glory is you stay in God. And how, how do you... <laughs> you go where God hangs out. He's searching for worshipers who will worship Him in the Spirit and in truth. So God hangs out in the Spirit because He is Spirit. But He's looking for those worshipers who just want Him more than a ministry, more than a schedule, more than what's written on a bulletin. They want God more than anything that any preacher has ever said. They want more, they want God more than anybody who's ever lived in the Bible and what's ever written. They want God more than that. Do you want God more than Enoch? If you do, you will get translated. <laughs> Actually, we've already been translated into the kingdom of light by the precious blood of Jesus in the sun. Hallelujah. The sun is brighter on this side than the sun on that side. Hallelujah. See, on, in the natural realm, the sun, we got the overflow of the sun from a distance from that ball of fire way off in the universe and the sky. And we feel its warmth, we get its nutrients, we get the light. But the Son of God is not far off. Actually, He's within everyone who's invited Him into their heart. He's made them Lord, Master, and Savior of their life. As they trade their life, they receive His life. Yes, the Son of God. We don't get the overflow, we got the fullness it's all in Christ, the fullness of God, dwelling in bodily form. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, man. Shabbat. Wow, I've been drinking a lot of wine in the Holy Spirit today. Oh, man. I wish my, my six-year-old could drive the car. It's okay, we got angels. We got angels, man. Did you know that you have ministering spirits of fire around you at all times? Even if you don't feel the angels <laughs> that are around you, man. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
We are encompassed around about by angels. There's more with us than there are with those in the world. Greater is he who is in you than he who is in the world, you know? Christ in you is a majority. You guys win. <laughs> you win. What was I talking about earlier? I was going to go to a scripture, man, but oh, wow. Let's just take a drink break, huh? Oh, I love the Bible. If you knew who it was, <laughs> Jesus said, if you knew the gift of God and who it was talking to you, you would have asked of him and he would have given you living water. Oh, I love you, Holy Spirit. Jesus, I want more living water. I want a double portion for me and for my family and for those around me, God. The living words of the living God, living and moving and having his being through you as you live and move and have your being in him as one. You and who was baptized into the Lord as one spirit with the Lord, so you're not too far from the kingdom. <laughs> you're in the kingdom of heaven if you're in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. What time is it? Okay, we got some time left. Oh yeah, yeah, time is relative. You go to the kingdom of heaven and walk in heaven, you could be there for a millennium and just grow in the spirit and come back and it was just like five seconds on the earth. God dwells in eternity. He put himself inside there after he made it. <laughs> so it doesn't matter. He can just yank you at a time and just fill you and disciple you and teach you and just fill you with wisdom, understanding, counsel, might, all the seven spirits of God and w like wisdom beyond your years because it's eternal. It's His wisdom. <laughs> Hallelujah. He gives you an impartation of Himself. Shabba. Let's read the Bible. <laughs> Paul, an apostle of Jesus Christ by the will of God and Timothy, our brother, to the saints and faithful brethren in Christ who are at Colossae, grace to you. You know what grace is? Grace is the power and glory of God to empower you to walk above the sin nature. Hallelujah. Grace is like the river of life just flooding your gates, washing away all the serpent dust. You know, he will feed on the dust of the earth. The river of life flushes away all the serpent dust. Holy Spirit puts to death the deeds of the flesh, the fallen nature, so you can walk in Christ's nature. Anyways, grace be to you in peace from God our Father. Hallelujah. That's a good, that's a good greeting from an apostle. There's going to be manifest grace, and there's going to be the manifest peace of God that passes all understanding and theology so that you can be renewed in the spirit of your mind as they release fresh revelation. You know, when you're greeted by a true apostle, there's going to be a manifest kingdom of heaven blasting through your entire being. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We, we give thanks to God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you. That's a sign of a true saint. They want, the, they want others to be built up because they got built up. And they're like, wow, God is awesome. So they want others to be built up so that they can realize that God is awesome too and release the very awesome God through their heart, through their mind through their emotions, their words. Every part of them will just be releasing God and, show, and showing, they'll be projecting God through their heart. Projecting reality is like a screen for others to read and see and taste and know that God is amazing. God is good. Ah, praying the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, praying always for you, since we heard of your faith in Christ Jesus and the love which you have for all saints. That's the fruit of the Spirit. That's love. The fruit of a religious spirit is debating about love. <laughs> 
They just want to debate. There's no substance or spirit of love on their words. It's just the debate spirit, which is called pride. It's like the fruit. Of, it's bad fruit. Yeah, get into God and He'll, yeah, He'll manifest some good fruit. Because of the hope laid up for you in heaven, which you previously heard in the word of truth, the gospel, which has come to you just as in all the world also it is constantly bearing fruit and increasing. The true gospel will bear fruit in your spirit. The false gospel will bear debates, ideologies, dead words, dead works. They'll be teaching about God but never bringing anyone into an encounter with the Spirit of God who they teach about. So they don't know what they're talking about. Jesus said, we know who... Uh, something like that. <laughs> oh, man. We speak what we do know or something like that. Yeah, you speak of who you know. When you have an experience with God, that experience has spiritual substance within it to be released through your mouth gate. And it's like a, it's like some manna coming out of your mouth. It's like the bread come down from heaven and out through his saints, you know? Fresh manna, fresh bread, fresh revelation is like always in in uh in uh in fresh baked bread. Hello, I'm done. <laughs> I gotta go pick up my kid. Oh man, I love you guys. I love the I love the true body of Christ in the spirit. I love my enemies too. They stretch me. And uh hallelujah. I do not love the devil. I love human beings who are pre uh, Christians. <laughs> they're they're pre God lovers. They just need to have the encounter with the living God. And they're pre-sons of God. Pre-bride. Hallelujah. Yeah, man. Just taste and see God. And once you taste and see God, others will taste and see God through you if you're transparent about it. Hallelujah. Love you, man. Love you, woman. Body of Christ. Love you, enemies, all my haters. <laughs> Hallelujah, because God loves, God loves you too. He, he loved me when I was a hater, and uh, His love never changes. His love is always unconditional. No matter, no matter how screwed up we are, it doesn't change. We just go from glory to glory and revelation to revelation, realizing how awesome and how nice God really is. He's really full of joy and peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'll finish reading the Bible later. I gotta go pick up my kid. God bless your face. Hallelujah.